Hey everybody, thanks so much for joining us right here on The Right View. Tonight we got another athlete. Y'all know I love athletes. It's one of my favorite things. We are joined tonight by professional golfer Daniela Holmquist. I know her better as Danny because Danny, I see you practicing all the time. Um, listen, your uh, your career in golf obviously started a long time ago. I think anyone who is a professional in their sport, whether it's golf, whether it's hockey, whether it's baseball, whatever it is, it's something that you must truly love in order to dedicate your life to it. How did you first get into golf growing up? Because I feel like uh, it's it's probably the smartest sport that one could start very young because it is a sport you can play your whole life. And like, let's be honest, you can make quite a bit of money playing golf, right? I mean, on a good week, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, it's, uh, my dad actually played professional soccer, so. Oh, wow. I'm born in Switzerland, then we moved to Italy, and they lived in Germany before that, before moving back to Sweden, but it's, uh, I think he bribed me pretty young with a pet to not play soccer. Oh, women's to not so play soccer, why? Uh, no, it wasn't, women's soccer wasn't that good back then, and then I think because of his injuries, uh, I think he kind of wanted me to do something else, and stay out of his shadow a little bit too. Uh, so my grandpa played golf. He uh, started at age 44 and became a senior uh, European champion. So he really got into it. So golf was like his entire life, even though he started such a late age. So I think just going to the summer house when I was younger in Sweden, it'd be my way to kind of spend time with my grandpa and my, my family. Wow. And so what age were you when you really started playing golf? Because I mean, you may or may not have seen my kids out there on yeah. the range every every now and again, Danny. My daughter's four and my son is six. And I'll tell you, the interesting thing is my son in the past, like, I'm going to say past year, probably six months really, is like obsessed with golf. And he's really into it. My daughter, it's kind of a take it or leave it situation. But how old were you when you started? I mean, first of all, I've seen them out there. They're so cute. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> They're all right. We'll yeah, kill. it started, you know, those like plastic clubs from, from Toys R Us when it existed yeah. um, and uh, just whacked pine cones, you know, and then I think my first tournament, like it was like nine holes tournaments and it was in Stockholm and Stockholm and Sweden has a really good junior program for, for golfers. I mean, golf, golf is like the second largest sport in Sweden. Uh, so I would just play those at the age of 10, 11 and we just, you know, it's funny enough, like those nine hole events, like points things you know, like really not serious but a lot of my peers that are Swedish now on tour actually grew up playing them too so it's really funny like we can look back when we were 10 11 we played against each other you know for those events and now we're out you know traveling the world in the LPJ. wow I mean it's so cool to me to to think of playing a sport as your profession because Truth be told, Danny, like once upon a time, I was like, well, uh, somehow I'm going to be a professional athlete. I don't know in what, I don't know how it'll work out, but like, to me, that is the coolest thing. Cause I mean, you know, everybody who, who tunes into this show often knows I love a good workout. So if the idea would be like, you're going to pay me essentially to work out, to keep my body in shape, to do something, a sport that I enjoy and I love. And like, that's my job. That's kind of sweet. I mean, did you have any premonition growing up, like, this is what I want to do professionally one day? So, I mean, first of all, I've seen you in the gym, and I feel highly unfit in comparison <laughs> <Stop> to it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it's, you know, I, I think for me, I'm, I'm just strange in a way mentally. When I set my sight on something, that's my only focus. And it's like, you know, I just kind of breathe and live the whole thing. It's my entire universe and it's a strange way it's not forced it's just kind of predetermined for me so I decided when I was in fourth grade that I was going to be a professional golfer wow and you know I can't say what it is I think maybe having professional athletes in the family but I just thought it was the coolest thing I went out and watched a tournament and saw the girls that were on tour that was in Stockholm and I'm like wow I want to be there one day so I enrolled myself in an English-speaking school started in sixth grade so I had to take two buses and two trains every morning to get to this English speaking school so oh. I could English better because I wanted to play college golf so I wanted to have a degree before turning pro and I know it's not very common on my tour most girls don't go to college if you look in comparison to the men's tour 
And uh, my dad said too, yeah, you can turn pro if you get a degree. So I did that to, you know, make it easier for college golf. So I went there for a couple of years and then did college golf in the U.S., graduated in three and a half and, and turned pro. Wow, girl. That's, I mean, honestly, how freaking cool. So you're Swedish by birth, right? And then you said you were born technically, or your family's from Sweden, right? But then you were born in Switzerland. You moved to Italy. Is that right? Yes. Yeah, correct. You've been all over. You've been all over the place and you moved to the United States, obviously, given that your your family background is Swedish. And that's, I, I assume, where you spent a lot of time growing up. Having Annika Sorenstam must have been someone perhaps you looked up to quite a bit in your youth. Is that true? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we had so many Swedish golfers coming out. We had Jesper Parnovic, who lives in Jupiter, too. I mean, we had so many guys and girls and especially Annika. I mean, I know yeah. she's too and I, I think she was a big big inspiration for us and she had camps and she would come back you know for a week or something and do like a junior clinic and we thought it was the coolest thing to like see Annika and like you get a signed ball from her and it just you know made the biggest difference so I think she's made a bigger difference for a lot of us girls on tour than I think perhaps she realizes too but just by wow. being there and for us to see her yeah that's so cool I mean listen we all we all certainly need role models and and people to look up to and i think you know some of us may not even realize that that we are that and for for annika maybe that's the case but i have to say danny for folks in my own family i think you're a bit of a role model because i know you've played golf a few times with my niece kai who is an amazing golfer actually for her age i think she's she's incredible and like i don't i don't know the world of golf like you do but I've seen her hit some balls and I know that she goes out there. And the interesting thing is, you know, people, people love to, I mean, it's shocking, say really horrible things about our family and knock us any chance they get, but you can't knock somebody when they go out there and they actually do it, whatever it is, whether it's like doing triathlons like I do or going out like Kai and really playing well in some of these tournaments. Um, but I think you're probably a person who inspires her quite a bit. She's a very good golfer though, is she not? She is. And you know, it's it's funny with the world of sports. I mean, there's no nepotism. There's nothing that can be yeah. handled. You got to earn everything yourself. I mean, with your race, yep. it's not like you're going to start 500 yards in front of anyone. Like, yeah. you have <laughs> I, I think that's the cool thing with sports. And, you know, and I think that, I mean, for Kai, especially like she's become like a little sister to me, you know, she's, yeah. Is someone that you know I like absolutely love as a person and as a golfer too. And you know she is a phenomenal golfer, but I think she's an even greater person. And uh -huh. uh, you know she's a captain of her high school team, and I think she's you know being a great older sister too. And you know I've I've gotten really close to her, and it's been fun to see how good she's gotten. And um, mm -hmm. between us, I will ask her to be a bridesmaid in my wedding. <gasps> oh, oh, we're spilling yeah. some tea here today. Oh, I love this. Don't tell her though, but <laughs> oh my yeah. god. Yeah, which nobody say anything. Everybody yeah. keep it keep it on the down low. That's so sweet. Well, I mean, I just have to say thank you for all you've you've done for her. I know, like I said, you've really been someone uh who she's looked up to. And I think it's important for us to have great role models and great inspirational women out there. And I just love it. I love the fact that you were like in fourth grade, you know what, this is what I'm going to do. And you, you set your sights on it and you did it and you had it like you just told all of us take the bus, two buses to go to this English speaking school. It's so cool. And, and now to see where you are, um, I think is amazing. You, you have a crazy schedule though, Danny, like a uh, truth be told, I see you often and you really have the, the dirt on me because you see me all the time walking my three dogs, like a crazy lady around uh, the golf course where you practice quite often. And then I look over and like, there you are. And there are all these like professional golfers. And I'm like, oh my God, they must think I am absolutely insane. Cause there I am like sometimes in like a bike outfit. Cause I'll have just come back from a bike ride, walking my dogs around like, you really, you really got it on me. If you wanted to, uh, to blackmail me, I'm sure you could just take a video of me walking around uh, the area with my dogs and, uh, and someone would pay a lot of money to have that and put it out there and embarrass me. So <laughs> hey, thanks for not doing it yet, Danny, I guess is the truth. No, especially with the shades. I love it. <laughs> 
Yeah, you can. Yeah, I'm sure there's some some good comments. There. Like there she is again with the three dogs, like always, always around. I gotta walk these dogs. You know, you know what that's about. But like, listen, oh, you're a good dog mom. So I'm. Mean, oh, like, well, thank- I think that's a great thing. And then the second of all, I'm probably thinking, geez, I should be in the gym right now. Like, oh, stop it. <laughs> like so much oh, more. My God. <laughs> I know y'all, y'all are doing fine out there, but you travel a lot. The last time I saw you out walking around, we were trying to figure out like when we could do this interview and how it was going to work out. And I mean, we're usually physically in the same place, but we're not right now. And you were like, yeah, I got to go to Japan. I got to go here. I got to go there. How often are you traveling when you are a professional golfer? Way too much. I mean, it, it's, I think with any professional athletes, there's up and ups and downs. And I think the the golf part is a little bit tougher, especially for us on the LPJ, because we do not have um, same kind of means as maybe the PGA Tour golfers. Like, you know, I know, I know a lot of people see, watch the show Full Swing on Netflix and to showcase a lot mm-hmm. of the PGA Tour guys. And it looks like the best job in the world. Yeah, they have hardships too. And it's like, you know, they miss a cut and they fly home. Some of them, again, the people on the show, I'm sure it's not this case for everyone, but they jump on a private jet, get home Sunday evening right. or Friday evening, and then they leave again, get two days at home. I mean, I did nine weeks in a row this year. Like I did not, you know, I got engaged in Stockholm and I didn't see my fiance for, for seven weeks straight. And that's kind of a, a side I don't think many people understand. Like, yes, it's phenomenal life when you're playing great, you're making money, you're on TV, everyone wants to hang out with you they want to do dinner with you they want to sponsor you they want to do these events but then you have a few weeks when you're not playing as great and you're kind of lonely and you're living out of a suitcase and you're not going to see anyone the only thing you see is golf course hotel airport and it's not like it's a glamorous resort life where you're staying at the most beautiful resorts you know that you go to places where you probably wouldn't go on a vacation sometimes and you stay at a airport hotel or something and it kind of gets to you you know like your only company is a little bit the phone or your caddy or some other player so I think that's part of it too that not everyone maybe sees yeah well we need a full swing ladies edition I feel like let's get the let's get really what right like let's get what's going on out there with with you ladies because I think we should all have an opportunity to see that too Uh, Look, I am not, uh, I don't consider myself much of a a golfer. And I'll be honest, it's because, Danny, I haven't taken a lot of time to dedicate to it. Now, I actually think, I'm not saying I'm going to go on the LPGA Tour with you, but I think I could be a decent golfer if I took a little time and actually got after it and practiced um, as, you know, kind of like my kids are doing. I try when they're out having lessons. I'm like, oh, let me just kind of pick something up and, like, see what happens. But I think I could be... Okay, here's my question. Anytime I go out and I play golf like with my husband and I'll I'll be doing okay and then I hit one bad shot and I feel like it all just goes straight downhill. It is so mental, the game of golf, right? Like how how much of it is mental versus physical when you're out there, when you're playing in some big tournament, when you know there's so much on the line, you're the mental portion of it must be huge for you, right? Yes, I, I think, I mean, the mental part, especially when you get to a certain level, when you develop the skill set, I mean, it doesn't come down to the skill set as much anymore as it is, you know, the mental capacity and be able to handle the pressure and, and really block things out. And, you know, it's the thing is with golf, it really is a game of misses. Like, you know, everyone can hit a great shot, but it's also so much how much you miss and mm-hmm. about letting that get to you and just kind of just taking you know, when that shot is done, it's all about the next one. You can't dwell on the past at all. And I think that's probably a good metaphor a little bit for life as well in certain ways. But I think for you, obviously, you're an athlete. You can get good really well. You think you know, <laughs> you let, you know, you're that out, so you got you know, good weather. But you're going you're gonna to grab me when you see me out walking the dogs next time. You'll be like, come out and play. By the way, I have to ask you because – you know I'm a, do- a crazy dog lady. You yourself are a bit of a crazy dog lady now. Please, yeah. I mean, that's to say the least. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's talk about that. I mean, we need, I feel like, more crazy dog ladies. Tell us about your dog because um, this is a very dog-friendly show. When, anytime we can get a dog to make an appearance or a cat or, quite frankly, any animal for that matter, we're very pro-animal here at The Right View. So uh, what? tell us all about your dog. 
so her name is Aqua. Uh, it's a big uh, labradoodle. She looks like a pet bear. Uh, most people say she looks like a stuffed animal. I don't know if that's a compliment or not. <laughs> <laughs> Should I be bringing her on walks with my dogs a little bit? <laughs> you know, I'm yeah. just kidding. Yeah, no, love that. <laughs> um, and uh, she's actually a rescue in a in a strange way. So um, not all rescues uh, have to be from you know yeah from the street. And we rescued her from from a woman who bought a, a bought, bought a nice dog. You know, you know, really expensive dog too from a good breeder and everything. But she. It's kind of in a place it seemed like that she couldn't take care of herself you know just her life and everything got to her i think and so we kind of rescued her and uh, took her over and bought her from her and uh, you know take her on walks every day she'd never been on a walk before oh, wow. and yeah so she's a, she's a happy girl now and she it's just she's really helped me in my golf game too as crazy as that sounds because she doesn't care. This game is so tough as it is. And she doesn't care if I have a bad or a good day on the golf course. And she would just greet me with this unconditional love and just happiness and just wants to be there. And, you know, it's, it's the most incredible thing. And um, I, I just have so much love for her. Like, she literally thanks me every time I take her on a walk. She will stand on her back paws and give me a hug and kiss Aww. me. They're the best. Honestly, there there is nothing better. I am... You, there, there's no limit to how many dogs I would take in my house. Now, I mean, my husband may divorce me, let's be honest, but I got three now. I'd, I'd love to have more because it really is. It's unconditional love. Our, our dog, Ben, who is like the biggest of the bunch, was so broken whenever we adopted him. And when he first came to live with us that I feel like he wakes up every day and is honestly just so thrilled to be alive and and be living with us. And I think every day he's like, oh, my God, I'm still here. It's still happening. Although we've had Ben for like seven years. It's the greatest thing in the whole world. And I always I'm I'm a bit of a dog pusher on people, uh, honestly, uh, because I think once people feel it and they understand like how impactful they can be in your life, like you're just saying, um, I think it's the best. So I love that you have that to come home to. And maybe at the end of like a long travel session where maybe you've played great, maybe you haven't, it doesn't matter because you walk through the door and there's your pup and that's the best. And there, there's just, you know, there's no two ways about it. I, I absolutely love it. So I'm, I'm glad you have her if there I, to greet you. If I could rescue 10 more dogs, I would. And it's, you know, I just kind of freak out when I see a dog on the street that's by himself. Oh, yeah. I'm like, see this because I got to adopt this. I, I, I got to rescue it. I just love them so much. But we have so many great programs. I'm, you know, that you're, I know you're involved with some of them yeah. in, in our area that, you know, has so many good rescues and does great things for puppies. And I think, you know, we, if we can get some more of that in the world, I think we're in a good place. And let's do that. All right. Before we let you go, you do have a nickname, Spider Woman. How did you get that, Danny? What's going on? Yes. <laughs> it's a very uh, Googleable story. And it's probably not the classiest way to make it. <laughs> Sports center, but it's uh, <laughs> so I was playing in Australia and um, playing on the European tour first, and just kind of out of college and turned pro and um, played well. And then there was a qualifier for the LPJ event, which was the Australian Open. And uh, qualifying round was playing well, and then I hit this one shot that kind of ended up by a tree. So I go out there, just you know, punch it out, and I feel like this really sharp little like needle stab like right on my ankle and I looked down and it's a spider uh black spider with red on its back and nope fought it off and then it starts swelling rapidly I try to like I know I, obviously it's probably not the smartest thing to do but when something swells rapidly you kind of want to deflate it a little bit so I took a tea and tried to stab like to get the oh. vent um kept on playing and then paramedics came out the caddies were freaking out the local ones because you know there's some really deadly ones there they pretty much have 20 30 minutes oh to get my gosh right so uh paramedics came out and they said you know it's not great you're probably going to be dizzy uh I might throw up you might you know collapse a little bit get a fever get pain but you're probably not going to die they said that you're probably not going to die so was like, this okay. a black widow? Yes. So, uh, I'm like, like I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna play through. Like I'm fine. It'll be fine. Yeah. A black widow bike. Cool. The drive longest drive of my life with so much adrenaline after. So I drove a green wow. car four after like over 300 yards. It's just like 
so much adrenaline. Uh, went on, missed the qualifier, unfortunately, but played the round, and uh, yeah. <laughs> Dang, girl. Wow. Okay. Well, I mean, like, I, I feel like uh, that's that's pretty ballsy. That's pretty. That's something there to keep going after the the Black Widow bite. I'll tell you what, I'm not a I'm not a spider fan. Roaches yeah. and spiders, there there are a lot of things I can handle. And like I'm good. I you know, you need me to like lift something up, or I don't know, maybe there's like a rodent situation. I can handle that. That's fine. Whatever. The second a spider or a cockroach is involved, I'm out. I can't do it. It is not for me. I have closed the bathroom door before and shoved a towel underneath it and waited like 10 hours for Eric to come home and been like, you need to go handle this because there's a roach in there and I can't even, it's not, it's not going to happen. Well, oh it. my God. That, so what happened? Like, did it just heal on its own? Do you treat that in some variety? Yeah. Like what happens? have to go and get uh, antibiotics, antihistamines, and they have to clean out the wound because it's one of those things that, like, if you don't attend to it, it will just keep on growing. Uh, yeah. So, so not, oh, wow. not, I mean, I've done the same thing with cockroaches and spiders. So I had a fever once, a really high fever, and I started hallucinating that I had a cockroach in my nightstand. Like, I was full oh. of, <laughs> with, like, Tylenol, went to Home Depot, the local one I'm like I need like something for cockroaches I bought like one this like bazooka big one like for massive like infestations I'm sure the people they were like gosh what is going on with their like, home maybe you just want to move yeah. if this is what's going on wow oh the my god thing came back sprayed the whole thing and like obviously it wasn't anything there wow so Danny I know that you've played with Kai my niece and she thinks you're great there's another Trump who you have played with. Some may have heard of him, some maybe not. His name is Donald J. Trump, 45th president of the United States, of course, my father-in-law. You played golf with him. What was that like? And did you ever think that that would happen? You know, I, I didn't. And uh, it, it's hard, you know, growing up in, as, especially as a Swede or, you know, not an American citizen to think that you'd one day play golf for the president of the United States. It's, it's kind of far-fetched, but it was... Um, it's actually an incredible story how it all happened and, and what came out of it because I was I was a member of another course um, in Florida that had a lot of pros. I was the only female pro there and um, the board just made a decision that pretty much kind of pushed me out of it. I wasn't hold, held to the same standards as my male players, male counterparts. And, wow. Uh, so I had nowhere to go. I had nowhere to practice and we're talking about December season starts November 1st and it's really hard to gain access to these courses now in Jupiter so many people moved down and uh, I was at the point where I pretty much had to go to a muni course or you know just any local course to play there and and pay for range balls every day and it's fun like once in a while to go to these places but as a, you know my tour job and everything it's kind of hard to have that as an everyday option and I was set up to play with uh, Mr. President and uh, told him my story. We had a great time and so much fun to play with him. And he's a really good player. I don't think yeah, he's, he's not bad. Good. He made five birdies the first time I played with him by himself. Oh, all right. And, you know, we talked to him about it. And uh, I think so many people think that he's not supportive of women. I don't understand that. You, you can ask him about any LPJ events. He watches every single LPJ event. He can tell you stats about LPJ players and been a big supporter of the women's golf for many years. And I mean, he even held the US Open at his course. Right. And attended sitting president. So he heard my story and he said, I don't like this at all. You as a female professional golfer should have, you know, opportunities to practice and, you know, work on your game. And uh, so he made me an honorary member at his courses. So for me, it's not just about being able to practice at a nice facility. For me, this was a tool so I can continue on living my dream. And uh, wow, point, you know, it's pushed me that much and been able to give me the access to, to work on my game, to get me to the majors and to get me into these limited field events and, and being a, a top 100 player on tour now. Wow. I didn't even know that. That's amazing. But see, what th this is the kind of stuff that that most people will never hear. 
that he doesn't talk about Danny, that, you know, this is just how he operates. And those are those are the things that he does for people. And I can tell people stories for days like this. Um, but I love it. And look, we love having you at, at all the Trump courses. I think you're a great addition. Um, you know, it's it's really cool to be able to turn on the TV and see people we know who are literally in our backyard sometimes hitting golf balls up there on the screen. You make us so proud. So that is, I mean, that's so cool. I, I love that um, that you had such a positive experience with him. And he's you're right. He's a pretty good golfer. I mean, people like to say, oh, I'm sure he cheats and whatever. No, no, he can really hit him. And not only is he a good, a good golfer. Also, he's not a bad tennis player as well. There's really? some video, right? Yeah. I've seen him slam these these tennis rackets. I mean, he's really going hard when he's out there. So I love it. I, I think it's so cool. Well, kudos to you for, for you know, telling him your story. And, and I love that he did that. So very cool. And also, I mean, I think regardless of political views or anything, I mean, it's always an honor to play with the president regardless of who it is. Yeah. For him to do this for me at a point when I just had an injury and, you know, kind of had this happen to me. I had nowhere to go to help me, to give me this tool and now to be able to be back on top. And, it, you know, I'm forever grateful for him for, for doing that. Aww. Love it. Love to hear that. That's so great. Well, I'll say we're glad you're still around, Danny. We're glad the Black Widow didn't take you out. Um, you're so great. I love seeing you out practicing. Thank you for being so kind to my niece, Kai. We all love you and think that you're just like the coolest and such an inspiration. So go get them out there, girl. I know you've got stuff coming up and you're you're constantly out touring. Where can people follow you if they want to follow you on social media? Uh, I'd say Instagram is probably the one I use the most. Uh, so I think it's just Danny Golf or something like that. I yeah. love it. She's like, well, just, maybe. I don't know. I don't really know. <laughs> I love it. Well, keep. Keep doing what you do. You're the greatest. And thank you for, for taking some time to talk with us today here at The Right View. We appreciate it very much. To everybody at home, as always, thank you for joining us. Make sure you like, subscribe, share, and follow. And we'll see you back here next time for more of The Right View. Nothing is worse than being on a phone call that drops. Nothing is worse than trying to text someone and you can't reach them because your phone is out of service range. And nothing is worse than supporting these major corporations and companies who don't support us. That is why I love Patriot Mobile. They are America's only Christian conservative wireless network. They use every cell tower out there available to all networks so that they have the greatest 4G and 5G coverage nationwide, and they support the causes that are important to us as conservatives. If you go today to patriotmobile.com slash Laura Trump and use the promo code Trump, you will get free activation today. Again, that is patriotmobile.com slash Lara Trump. The promo code is Trump for free activation so that you can get a great cell plan and feel good about doing it. So I'm like a lot of people. I love to wear an Apple Watch, but I hate how it looks. And I scoured the internet to search for the best looking Apple Watch cases I could find, and I found it goldandcherry.com. They have absolutely beautiful watches, as you can see here. Everything is waterproof. Everything looks good with different outfits. You can get sporty, you can get fancy, but they are great quality, uh, made out of Delaware in the United States of America. And they have been kind enough to give me a promo code that I can share with you if you wanna get your hands on one of these as well. It's Lara. T L A R A T is the promo code to get yourself a discount at goldandcherry.com. And not only do they make Apple Watch cases, they also make great products for iPads and iPhones, keyboards, your desktop, everything you could possibly need. Goldandcherry.com. Use promo code Lara T so you can get yourself one of these today too. At The Right View, uh, we're very proud of the fact that we are independent. We get to say everything that we think and everything that we feel. We have no woke companies 
guiding us or telling us what we can and cannot say. We are always going to shoot you straight and give you the facts as we know them. And that's why it's important to support independent uh, outlets like The Right View. My name is Lara Trump, and I think Mike Lindell is a patriot. He is someone who loves this country, is willing to fight for this country. Um, I love my pillow because not only are my pillows made in the USA by American workers, uh, but they're great products and they're so great that not only do I use them in my own bed at night, my children actually requested, my daughter the other day went to the closet and pulled out a my pillow and said, this is the pillow that I want to sleep with. And I gotta tell you, she loves it and will have nothing to do with any other pillow. So it's a big hit around our house. My dogs also uh, happen to sleep on my pillow dog beds. So all around the Trump household, we're big fans. If you go to mypillow.com today and use promo code Trump, again, promo code Trump, you will not only save money, but you will help us continue this show and other shows like it and help us continue the fight for the future of America. Inflation has impacted all of our lives. I don't think anyone can go to the gas pump or the grocery store without noticing that it is a major factor. And unfortunately, it's not going anywhere. It doesn't seem like it's going down in the way that we would like it to. And one way to protect your money is by investing in precious metals, uh, gold and silver. That's always been a great way to make sure that you keep your money and you keep it safe. When you go to bh-pm.com, use promo code TRUMP. That way, if you decide you want to invest in gold and silver, you'll save yourself a little bit of money. We live in a time that's very interesting. A lot of us out there feel like a lot of our rights are slipping away. And if you're like I am and you want to have the right to choose whether or not to have a vaccine, how to live your life freely, and you're looking for a great doctor, I've heard amazing things about Dr. Sherwood. He's somebody who you should really check out and check into, um, and it'll help support this program and keep us going. So go to Sherwood.tv and use promo code Trump. Again, Sherwood.tv and use promo code Trump. You can save yourself some money and help us keep our program going.